Hey everyone, Sir Z here. Have you ever stopped to think about why some things are hard while others bend? Or why some objects float on water but others sink? These everyday differences can all be explained by something called physical properties of matter. Today we're diving into the world of physical properties of matter and explore some of the most fascinating ones. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to spot these properties in everyday objects around you giving you a deeper appreciation of the science behind everyday objects and how they behave as we interact with them. But what exactly are physical properties of matter? Well, physical properties are the characteristics of matter that we can easily observe with our eyes, feel with our touch, or measure using simple tools like a ruler or a scale. They help us describe and understand how different objects look, feel, and behave. Now that we know what physical properties of matter are, Let's start by exploring some key properties. These will help us understand how objects behave when we touch, bend, or even break them. First on the list is hardness. This property tells us how resistant a material is to being scratched or dented. For example, rocks are hard but you can scratch them with a knife, iron is harder but you can deform it with a sledgehammer, and diamonds are super hard which is why diamonds are used to cut other materials. Next we have flexibility. This is how easily an object bends without breaking. Again, ability of a material to bend, but without breaking. Take these plastic ruler and a piece of wire as examples. They are flexible because they can be bent without snapping or breaking. Related to flexibility is elasticity. This is the ability of a material to return to its original shape after being stretched or compressed. Rubber bands and springs are great examples of elastic materials. You can stretch them, they don't break. And when released, they go back to their original form. Then we have ductility, which is the ability of a metal material to be stretched into a thin strand. This property is super important for materials like copper in making electrical wires because again they can be stretched into long thin strands of wires. We use these wires for electrical wirings, wires we use for tying, cables, wire mesh, wire screens, and wire fences. Malleability is another property related to metals. This is the material's ability to be hammered, rolled, pressed, or flattened into thin sheets without breaking. Metals like aluminum are highly malleable, which is why they are used for making aluminum foil. Other examples are tin used for making cans and galvanized sheets of iron used for the protective roofing of our houses. Porosity is next. And porosity often goes hand in hand, or is often related to another physical property of matter called absorbability. But just to clarify, initially porosity is described as having many tiny holes on the surface of a material. Porosity is derived from the word pore, which means tiny hole on the surface, just like those tiny holes or pores we see on our skin. However, if we involve absorbability in the discussion, porosity then is defined as referring to the amount of physical space inside the material. These spaces are created inside the object by the pores from the surface that are interconnected to each other inside or within the object. So, when liquid or gas gets to these pores from the surface, it goes into and stays within these spaces inside the object. This now makes the definition of porosity as to the amount of space or pores within a material. The more porous a material is, the more spaces it has for liquid or gas to enter. So, what now about absorbability? Coming off from porosity, absorbability is about how well a material takes in and holds on to a liquid. Remember that porosity is about having these spaces inside the object because of its interconnected pores, right? So, when liquid or gas enters these pores, absorbability next is the ability of the object to keep or hold this liquid or gas within these spaces. In short, porosity is about how many physical spaces a material has inside it, while absorbability is about how well the material holds or keeps the liquid in. We now go to buoyancy. This determines whether an object can float or sink. Lighter objects float, and objects that can float are identified as buoyant. Example of buoyant objects are materials made out of light plastic, styrofoam, paper-based materials and empty containers with air inside them, while heavier objects that will sink are non-buoyant materials like rocks, metals, glass and objects made of concrete. Then we have conductivity. Conductivity is about how well a material allows heat or electricity to pass through. Materials that allow heat and electricity to pass through easily are called conductors. Materials that allow a small amount of heat and electricity to pass through are called semiconductors, while materials that do not allow any heat nor electricity to pass through are called non-conductors. Metals like copper and aluminum are great conductors because heat and electricity can easily pass through them, which is why they are two of the best materials to use for making electrical wires. Next is brittleness. 
the tendency of a material to break or shatter easily. Again, brittleness is the tendency of a material to break or shatter easily. Materials that can break or shatter easily are described as brittle materials or simply called brittle. Chalk is a great example, it's hard but also brittle, so it snaps when you apply too much force. Another good example is glass. It is solid but can easily break or shatter, so glass is brittle. Dry wood also becomes brittle, as well as dried leaves. Now that we've covered the basics, let's take a look at a few more physical properties that you probably encounter every day, but don't think too much about. First is color. Different materials can come in all sorts of colors. This might seem basic, but colors help us recognize and distinguish objects, and often colors give clues about the composition of an object or material. Texture is another important property. It tells us whether something is smooth, rough, soft, or hard to the touch. This helps us understand how an object feels and what it might be used for. And even when blindfolded, we can easily identify an object by touching it because of its texture. Also, after we felt its shape, size, and hardness. We also have brilliance, or how shiny something is, or its ability to reflect light or generate light. Metals like gold and silver have high brilliance, which is why they look so shiny under light, making them visually appealing. Other terms synonymous or related to brilliance are shininess and luster. Another important physical property is transparency. This refers to how much light can pass through a material. Materials that are fully transparent, like clear glass, let most light pass through, allowing us to see through them clearly. On the other hand, materials that are less transparent or translucent, like frosted glass, let some light through but not enough to see clearly. Finally, opaque materials like wood or metal entirely block light so we could not see anything from behind it. Temperature is another property that describes how hot or cold something is. We can easily measure temperature using a thermometer. You've probably used a thermometer when you were sick. Shape and size are also important physical properties. Shape tells us what form an object takes, whether it's round, square, or any other form. This also includes the physical state of the object, like being bent, curved, or straight. While size tells us how big or small it is, these are things we can observe just by looking. Another property is quantity or number. This refers to how many units or pieces we have of something. For example, how many colors do you see on this drawing, how many shapes, and so on. Density tells how much matter is contained in an object, regardless of the size. It is somewhat related to mass. A material with a large amount of matter inside is identified as a dense material and is usually heavy. Less dense materials are those containing less matter. They are usually lighter, for example, a rock is denser compared to a piece of wood with the same size because the rock contains a larger amount of matter inside it. And finally, phase of matter. It describes the physical form of a material as solid, liquid, or gas. Ice, for example, is solid, water is liquid, and steam is a gas. Each phase has its own unique physical properties. Here's a quick list of the key properties we discussed today. Let's read each one of them together. Hardness Flexibility Elasticity Ductility Malleability Porosity Absorbability Buoyancy Conductivity Brittleness Color Texture Brilliance Transparency Temperature shape, size, quantity or number, density, and phase of matter, which is either solid, liquid, or gas. Here's a couple of simple but fun experiments that you can try to perform at home. I have a PDF copy of these activities included in the description box below, which includes the set of quiz questions that follows and lecture notes from this video. Feel free to download and use them. Experiment 1. Testing buoyancy. What you'll need. A bowl of water, a rock, a piece of wood, and a small piece of styrofoam. What to do. Place each object in the bowl of water and observe whether it floats or sinks. What you'll learn. This will help you understand buoyancy, why some objects float while others sink. 
Questions to answer. Which of these objects are buoyant or were able to float? Which of these objects sank? Comparing the weight of the objects with your hands, which of these objects feels heavy and which one feels light? Going back to density, which of these objects is the densest? Which is the least dense? Do you think the object's density affects their buoyancy? Explain your answer. Experiment 2. Measuring temperature. What you'll need? A thermometer, a cup of ice water, and a cup of warm water. What to do? Measure the temperature of both the ice water and warm water using the thermometer. What you'll learn. This will show you how to measure the temperature of different objects. Questions to answer. What is the temperature reading for the water with ice? What is the temperature reading for the warm water? Comparing the readings which has the lowest temperature, the cup with ice water or with warm water. Which has the highest reading, ice water or warm water? Complete the sentence based on your findings and select the answer from the options provided. Cold water has blank, high or low temperature. Warm or hot water has blank, high or low temperature. Before you go, I've got some questions to test what you have learned so far from the discussion. 1. What physical property helps us understand why rubber bands can stretch? 2. Which physical property determines whether something will float or sink? 3. Can you name the three phases of matter? 4. What tool do we use to measure temperature? And 5. What is the difference between porosity and absorbability? And those are the basics about the physical properties of matter. I hope you had fun and discovered something new today, guys. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more science fun. And as always, leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you have any requests for our next discussion. This is Classy Edits, guys. Stay creative, keep on exploring, and I will see you again soon.